Alright, hi everyone, it's me, and today let's watch this silly but educational fool theory together. Let's go! History is full of iconic rivalries. In the sports world, there's stuff like Red Sox versus Yankees, versus. UNC versus Duke, Ohio State versus Michigan. In pop culture, there's Edward versus Jacob, oh, BTS versus so Blackpink, like. Team Captain Keep America off. versus Team Avengers, Avengers, Left Shark versus Right Shark. Even in the food world, there's rivalries with the likes of Coke versus Pepsi and Taco mm -hmm. Bell versus your bowels. But of all the oh. rivalries, one stands out as being the sweetest of the bunch. Left Twix versus Right Twix. Each factory took a vastly different approach. Left Twix flowed caramel on cookie, while Right Twix cascaded caramel on cookie. Try both and pick a side. For the past decade, Twix's marketing has centered around the different non-differences between the left half of Twix bars and the right half, all while asking us to pick a side. Well, today, we're gonna do exactly that. I'm gonna prove using data and science which side is indisputably the correct side of the Twix bar. Put it's the same. Left and right is the same. Manufacturing is the same. But Hello Internet, welcome to Food Theory. The Hello Internet, welcome to Food Theory! Hi, let's start. Show that chooses violence and eats both Twix at um, the same time. Um. Does that average out to make me middle Twix? So at this point, you get the basic conceit of the episode. Twix bars are some of the best candy bars available on the market. Strip a cookie, caramel on top, covered in chocolate. There are two <laughs> Twix bars in every package of Twix. They should be identical to each other. They probably should are be. identical to each other, and yet their marketing campaigns for the past decade have made a big deal about choosing size. Are you a left Twix person or a right Twix person? I technically don't really keep friends from right Twix. There's something really off about those guys. They've even gone so far as to create a lengthy backstory behind the rivalry. Years ago, when the inventors Seamus and Earl unveiled their Twix bar, the tension between them reached a breaking point. <laughs> oh! To this day, sharing nothing but a wrapper and an ill-designed driveway. Then they hired mercenaries to fight their brother's mercenaries. Now obviously this is all a joke, right? A big ol' sarcastic, trust us, the left and right sides are totally different, wink wink. I mean obviously this thing isn't serious. If it was, they'd bother to keep their facts straight. Originally, right Twix was cascaded with caramel, see? Left Twix flowed caramel on cookie, while right Twix cascaded caramel on cookie. But later in the campaign, it actually switches. Has you ever tried one of these bars made over at right Twix? Why? Our special cookie is cascaded with caramel and cloaked in chocolate. No! No, sir! No! Left Twix flows caramel and bathes in chocolate. Keep your story straight, Twix. It's almost like no one cares about the consistency of their own lore. Unless um, Matt Pat is just an advertisement. Uh, don't think too much about it, man. Don't think too much. It's just for entertainment purposes. Right. <laughs> Of course, he's secretly an undercover agent from Right Twix posing as a Left Twix employee. <laughs> No, no, that's not a real thing. I just care about this way more than they did. But what if? Yeah! What if the whole left Twix versus right Twix thing isn't tongue-in-cheek? What if this whole thing isn't cloaked in sarcasm and bathed in marketing hype? When you're choosing a Twix, which team should you choose to be on? Between left and right Twix, which one is the better Twix? I guarantee that by the end of the episode, you will have an answer. And there's only one way to find it out. Buying an egregious amount of candy bars and then aggressively performing science on them. So before we go any further, we need to establish our terms because let me tell ya, things are gonna get confusing in a hurry. For the purposes of today, when I say a Twix bar, I'm talking about an individual mm -hmm. stick of cookie dabbled with caramel and snuggled in chocolate. There are two Twix bars in a single packet. So that's the basics, but the bigger question, how do you tell the difference between left and right when the packaging has the bar's name written horizontally, thereby making this more of a top versus bottom kind of thing? Well, as we see in the commercials, the definitive way of opening a package of Twix is with the word Twix reading from the bottom. Bottom up. So when you're looking at a standard package of Twix in a supermarket line, top Twix is left Twix and bottom Twix is right Twix. You got all that? Great. Now throw it out the window. You see, that's the way things should be if the universe didn't hate me. But life always has a way of making these episodes more complicated than they should be. No. Yeah, in this day and age, if there's no internet connections, mm-hmm, GG. 
Knowing that I wanted an adequate sample size, we bought 208 Twix bars. What? And then we opened the boxes, and a slow dread passed over me as I realized that the wrappers are now labeled as containing two left Twix or containing two right Twix. Because life is pain. You see the problem here, right? This adds yet another layer of confusion to the question. Not only do we now have to figure out if there's a difference between the left and right bars inside of an individual packet, but now we also have to factor in whether the Twix packaged as right Twixes and the ones labeled as left Twixes actually differ in any meaningful way. So it's the same, right? With that in mind, I had to label all of my Twix as left to left, left to right, right left, or right right, taking into account both the name on the packaging as well as the side of the packet they're on. And can you just stop for one first and just recognize, uh, show respect to my pet that this is just an advertisement gig. It's for entertainment purposes. It's supposed to be enjoyable. And remember, it's like I'm bringing in the facts involved. <laughs> Just as a friendly reminder, this was meant to be a dumb episode, a fun one just for the lols, but instead it's becoming more complicated than trying to solve for Mario's height. You know how sometimes on this channel I get mid-video regret syndrome about the episode topics I've selected? Yep, this is that point. A series of frustrated head desks later, it was data time. I needed to find the cold hard differences between left Twix and right Twix so that I could, as the advertising suggested, choose a side. As such, I devised a few tests. First and easiest was a simple weight test. Pop them on the scale and see what it spits out. Second was a crunchiness test. Maybe something with the packaging renders one of the bars a bit more stale than the other. And finally, a taste test. Give random strangers a blind taste test of a bunch of Twix bars to see what trends pop up in the data. And then maybe, maybe I'd be able to draw some conclusions about the optimal Twix experience. For but having said that, um, if you try it, if you right now you try it, that my results may vary because having said that there might be like confirmation bias or it's just coincidence or maybe you are just thinking too much about it man, MatPat maybe too much about it First, weight. Twix bars average between 24.5 and 25.5 grams, and any deviation from that was very rare. Out of the 208 bars that we weighed, only 10 fell outside of the range, which hey, kudos to Mars Incorporated. Quality control game is on point. The biggest outlier was a monstrous 27 gram thick boy with pretty much all the extra weight coming thick. from a larger volume of caramel. So was this a right bar or a left bar? It was a left Twix coming out of a package labeled two right Twix. They ask you how Oh! Of the other overweight bars, five of them came out of left Twix packages, with two specifically being left left bars. Among the Twix that were underweight, both of them came from right Twix packages, but one was from the left side and one was from the right side. When you do the math, it works out like this. The average weight of Twix on the right side of the package, 25.03 grams. The Twix on the left side of the package, 25.04 grams. Basically no difference. But maybe instead of looking at where in the packet the Twix came from, we should just trust what the label tells us. Twix that came from packets labeled left Twix averaged out at 25.05 grams, while Twix coming out of two right Twix packages averaged out to 25.02 grams. That is a 0.03 gram per bar difference for left Twix. 0.06 grams in a packet, so a slight edge for left Twix, but still, it's practically a rounding error. Go figure, it's almost like they're meant to be identical. So the next thing I wanted to try was crunchiness, which to me served as an indicator of freshness. I've used a decibel meter for a couple episodes now. We used it for trying to create the crunchiest chip episode here on Food Theory. In Film Theory, we used it to test out the survival techniques of a quiet place. So yeah, we got it. Why not eat some Twix in front of it? I took three bites of 16 bars, with four from each category being represented. I expected literally nothing to come out of this. But the Having said that, results may vary again, right? It is Matt Pat, I'm, um, I'm, um, I'm, um, not you, I'm, um, I'm, um, I'm, um. get it? differences that I found actually wound up being shocking. Bars in packages marked right Twix wound up being slightly louder than their counterparts in the left Twix sleeves, but only by a little bit. A 1.4 decibel difference, nothing major. However, there was a noticeable difference between the left and right Twix in the same package. Bars on the left of the packet averaged 72.3 decibels, which was noticeably louder than the 69.6 .6 decibels coming from bars on the right. It was oh. nearly a 3 decibel swing. Wait a minute, we, we found a difference. We found a significant difference! This episode yeah! was a waste of time! Well, human error- <laughs> I was saying that this episode wasn't a waste of time! Yeah! Oh. <sighs> yep. 
there is certainly an X factor that could explain these three decibels, I did my best to try and keep the bites consistent and sample enough to try and make it fair. No, I suspect Try that the three to? decibel difference might actually have to do with the packaging or storage of the Twix. In fact, my hypothesis, my food hypothesis. My food, oh, wait, 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 he's food hypothesis is that it all relates less to the left versus right difference and more to the top versus oh, bottom no. placement that I talked about earlier. When on store shelves or slotted into a shipping box, one Twix is always going to be sitting on top of another. Because of the way the package is printed, the one on top becomes the left Twix in our experiment today, which wound up being the noisier of the two groups. So being on top is potentially doing something to keep the bar fresher and crunchier. Maybe it's exposed to less light or maybe less air. Maybe residual moisture is being caught in the the bottom of the package while the top is able to stay nice and dry. Not entirely sure, but for a crisper snap, left Twix seems to be the quantitative winner. Finally came the real test, the taste test. Asking a number of friends, associates, and random strangers to eat candy while I stare at them and take notes. I made sure to unwrap the Twix before serving it to him to not bias anyone with a left Twix or right Twix wrapper. Instead, I thought it was a better idea to walk around carrying Ziploc baggies full of unwrapped candy bars marked with strange symbols. Also, I was driving around in a windowless white van. On an unrelated note, I'm now on a couple of government watch lists. For science! And- Yep, uh, on the unrelated note. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. For science! <laughs> What did my class A felony get me? Nothing! To my surprise, there was no surprise. And by that I mean there was no clear preference between left or right Twix, no matter how you were defining left or right Twix. No trend, no difference, except there was one key data point that stood out like a sore thumb. People's preference had nothing to do with left versus right, but it had everything to do with which bar they selected first. In a whopping 85% of our tests, the subject reported that the Twix bar they ate first tasted mm -hmm. better than the second, which comes with a oh. shocking takeaway for Twix. You guys don't need two bars. Forget left versus right Twix. You're trying too hard. Just give people one. The first is apparently more than enough. Honestly, it's kind of ironic considering Twix's old marketing slogan, the one that I grew up with. Yep, encouraging the kids of my generation to be outright terrible to each other so that they can have more candy. Except, as our data just showed, we actually don't want more candy. The second bar is always gonna taste far inferior to the first. Maybe instead of selfishly hoarding both bars like some sort of greedy chocolate dragon, you instead sure. share that second Twix and get yourself the sweet taste of altruism. Or Twix- That's right, um, educate them to share, be a nice kid so that the next generations can help the next generation, can help the next generation build up a better, more positive society for all. Isn't that correct? That's great! Maybe you save some money and give the people what they really are asking for, less of your candy. Our data in this test actually huh? supports existing research in the field, something called Sensory Specific Satiety, or Triple S, if you want to make it sound like a cheap Vin Diesel ripoff. It's the scientific term for the human experience of enjoying food less the more of it we eat. Part of this is diminishing returns as we get less enjoyment from the things that you get, but Sensory Specific Satiety actually goes way beyond that. An Oxford study found that your desire for the specific types of food you're eating drops significantly faster than for other types of uneaten food. Studies done on the pathways in a monkey's brain showed that as it ate, certain neural pathways to the monkey's hypothalamus, that's the part of the brain that controls your appetite, became less responsive when the monkey saw food that it had recently eaten. But it would become more responsive when it saw new, uneaten food. Bringing things all the way back around to our original question, which is better, left Twix or right Twix? Well, if you're looking to maximize your enjoyment, choose left Twix first. Not only was it shown to be the slightly fresher bar, but choosing it first means that you're getting the best bites when you're most eager to be eating the candy. But again, shocking literally no one, the difference here is mostly in the marketing. These two things are made to be identical, which leaves us asking the big question of why? Why go to the effort of taking two identical food products and giving them two separate labels? I mean, Twix is basically advertising against itself. Why does this work? How does this work? Does this work? Well, like so much of advertising, it all comes down to psychology and the tricks that marketers can play to get into your brain. There's a phenomenon called choice supportive bias or post-purchase rationalization which is the tendency oh, let's see on time choice supportive bias or post-purchase rationalization 
of people to come up with justifications to support the choices that they're making in their life. Whenever people are forced to decide between two or more different products when making a purchase, they're more likely to ascribe positive attributes and associate positive feelings with the product that they just bought. It's basically the opposite of buyer's remorse. We want to convince ourselves that we made the right choice. Our money wasn't wasted. In fact, this happens all the time even when the choice is a complete illusion and we're choosing between two identical products. It's one of the big reasons that lotteries let you control which numbers that you pick, even though you're just as well off with a completely random lottery ticket. Giving people the ability to choose, even if it's a false or artificial choice, gives them a feeling of control. When yeah, like, the more you know, I guess, like, the specific number that you choose for your lottery might have the same winning chance as a random number that you might just randomly pick. Yeah. Whenever you bite into that Twix bar, whether it was a right or a left Twix, what you're experiencing while chewing is the result of a decision that you just made, which motivates your brain to come up with justifications for why this Twix bar is actually delicious, and why you're so smart for having made the decision that you just did. Speaking of smart decisions, by the way, on screen you're about to see two other episodes of Food Theory. If you want to see me debunk another classic candy bar marketing slogan, check out this video breaking down the science of why, if you're hungry, you should not grab a Snickers. And if you want to find out about an even bigger lie that Big Candy's been feeding you, check out this video unveiling how a frighteningly large number of candy bars that claim to be made with chocolate aren't actually chocolate. Regardless well, of which one you choose, guess. just know you've already made the smartest choice of all watching this channel. Now go, yeah! grab a top Twix Thank and share you. the bottom one with your friend. You deserve it. And as always, remember, it's all just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. <laughs> Well, anyways, thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you find this video very interesting to watch. If you do like this video, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to my channel, and comment down below if you have any questions about us. Down below, down below, down below, down below. Don't forget to follow my channel. I will hope to see you in my next video. But hey, that's just a theory, a food theory. Bon appetit. <clears throat> um. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye. Subscribe.